Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Neville and welcome to Selective Imagery. I started taking pictures when I was seven or eight years old and I really shoot just about everything. And here's some samples of what I take, whether it be sunrises, alligators, birds, birds, birds. It's what I do a lot of right now. But I also do macro. I'll do small animals and I'll do street photography and I'll use my old cameras to take some black and white photos with. So here's a sample of uh, one of my cameras coming up. So I'm a generalist but right now I'm focused a lot on wildlife and birds in particular. So I hope you enjoy my channel and let's get right to the show. Welcome to Another Day, Another Bird. This is going to be a long video. It encompasses three locations. Here we are, sunrise at Merle's Inlet. And we're watching some of these baby oyster catchers with their parents. And uh, they tag along and they're pretty much self-sufficient now in terms of eating. Um, but they're still they're still hanging around with mom and dad and there were three youngsters and they all made it and they survived the king tides that I've talked about before and um, and good for them and here's a uh, quick video clip and you can see all the the oyster shells on the bank so you have these banks that are a combination of oyster shells and cord grass when the tides are high, it'll cover those banks up because those are just right off the right off the water. Now I think one of these has a band on its leg and the other one does not, which is interesting. The youngsters I don't believe have any bands put on have uh, have any bands on them yet either so Yeah, they're just chilling right now. We're going to have some more uh, still images here. Young one walking with the parent. And then we have a video of one uh, of the youngsters that was kind of lagging behind and just taking its time walking around. You always have to have that one, you know, even as even as a human, you always have to have that one kid that's always stopping to look at stuff while everybody else is, while your other kids are following you, but one always has to stop and you turn around like, where'd Joey go? <laughs> Eventually, the young one does catch up. I can assure you that and all is well. You know, this is the area too where you'd usually get a lot of brown pelicans, you know, on the posts in the marina and whatnot, and there haven't been that many hanging around this year, so another sign of things changing. Another still. And another video. Yeah, you can't say these are action-packed videos here for the most part uh, of these birds, at least the adults, because 
they're just kind of chilling. Now here one is playing with the stick, you know, hitting the stick with the uh, its left leg when you're facing the bird. And then once it sees that I'm looking at it, it stopped hitting the stick. Why it was doing that, I don't know. Is it like ringing the dinner bell? A friend of mine basically watches these oyster catchers for the whole season. Goes here like every day and documents what he sees and has been doing that for many, many, many years. And he could tell you anything you want to know about these birds. And you're not going to find multiple nesting pairs like next to each other. Okay, they're pretty territorial. And they will, you know, they will shoo away uh, other adult oyster catcher, catchers. So you may have nests in the area, but there's, there's a certain amount of separation between them. Let's put it that way. And there's no skimmer nests in here. Two more stills. Here's the young one. One of them. got another clip. Yeah, this one decides to, uh, it's time to do a little preening. So like I said at the, at the beginning, this, this whole um, show is going to be a little on the long side because I went to three separate areas. I went to Merle's Inlet, which is what you're watching now. I went to Huntington Beach State Park, and, and uh, I've documented three separate areas within the park. And then I finished up at Brook Green Gardens, and this is a culmination of... Um, of many visits. This certainly isn't anything you could do in a day. And this may be the last, I don't know if I'll have a video next week or not. The, the weather is just incredibly hot and humid down here right now. And I don't handle humidity very well. So I may have to uh, have a forced reprieve for a little while. And uh, maybe I could do some of my thanks for the memories segment and talk about some other vintage cameras that I've purchased but uh, those take a long time to put together so we'll see if I have a video next week it's possible that I will not but we will try and a few more stills now we're going to move on to Huntington Beach State Park where we see a female red-winged blackbird and of course some spoonbill shots These birds are just absolutely stunning. And here's a group of uh, spoonbills early in the morning. And as I pan over to the left, you'll see a group of tricolor herons. And one of them, you know, gets a little run in here. You know, seems like he wants to take off and go somewhere. He doesn't fly, he just starts walking fast.
I mean, they intermingle somewhat. You have, um, you know, some egrets in there with them. Eventually they fly off, they go to other locations. And here's a great egret that, you know, there's still some nesting areas and uh, they, they keep the nests up and not all the birds have had their young yet, apparently, because, you know, there really is no other reason to be grabbing a stick. And here's one that's grabbed something called a shrimp. Good size one, I might add. Now here's a short video clip. It's interesting, you see that bubbling in front of the uh, egret, and that's an alligator. Now this gator kept on going underwater, popping up, and you could tell from this video that that gator is not far away from that bird. And if that gator wanted to get that bird, I guarantee you, at this point in time, it could get that bird without any problem. It is very, very close. But it keeps on submerging and moving its head around like it's trying to find food or, or it's just horsing around. I don't know. I don't know what, or maybe it's just kind of like teasing the bird, but the bird seems to be pretty much just looking straight ahead and somewhat ignoring the gator, which I don't think is the smartest move. You can just see the gator continually submerging and then popping up. And at some point, he turns his head, and now he's starting to look at the bird. So when you're, you know, doing the video, at this point, you're saying, well, is something going to happen? It's possible. But you hope the bird's going to be smart enough to get out of Dodge before anything bad happens. Okay, gator pops up again, still looking at the bird, starts swimming towards the bird very, very slowly. Now it goes underwater, so this is where you think, okay, this is not going to end well. But, no, it pops up. I mean, at this point, it's probably less than a foot away from it. And finally, I think the bird decides, leaves its calling card, leaves a feather, and takes off and does the right thing. And here's just another one when the, the sun got a little brighter and you got all the reflections in the water from the trees on the other side of the pond. And um, this is not slowed down. And I was kind of surprised how swiftly he or she was going through the water, uh, considering that the water isn't very deep. It's probably not easy to swim in that right now. But it managed to. Here's a little blue heron in the color change uh, that it's going through. And some groups of great egrets. There's the little blue again. Now this fella's looking for food. And sometimes it, it seems like they get very enamored with their own reflection in the water. Sometimes you're not sure if they're positioning to get food or whether they're just kind of like saying who's that other person in the water, who's the other person I'm looking at, but here it got a shrimp. Here it got a weed. It took a while to figure out it wasn't anything that it wanted to eat. It finally just spit it out. It's still a gator. Going back to this fella again. Looking for some more food.
and I think it's going to find some more here in a second. And it's still looking here. Wild well, on its head back and forth. And bang. I guess it got another one. I mean, they don't get something every time they strike, and obviously, like you saw, it struck and it got a weed. Got confused by it, I guess. Or maybe what it was trying to get was next to the weed. But they get stuff more often than not, otherwise they wouldn't be still walking, as they say. That was a miss. Yeah, eventually, see it move its leg there to try to kick up the bottom a little bit. You know, you have a great egret in flight, a couple shots. Switch over to a little blue, and this is uh, full speed. And you just see a bird flying in and out of the frame like crazy, and you're like, oh, what the heck's going on? What is that bird? And uh, as the little blue is going in and out of the shadows. You just have shafts of light that are that are hitting the bird every once in a while. And you got that, that green heron is the one that was flying around like a bat getting in the uh, picture here. And the little blue, I don't think is too impressed with it and walks over to it. Kind of makes it disappear eventually here. And then just as that one goes, another one, another different bird flies in. Still shot of the Rosetta Spoonbills. This one's taken off. Back to the little blue again. A few more pictures, and, and here, once again, now this one, same problem, just thinks that the weed is food. It's starting to get a little agitated, and eventually just drops it, realizing that it is not a food item. Like the reflection in the water here. Here it has a small fish and you're going to see it just like it just flips it up into its mouth. Right down the throat. That's it. Now here it starts acting really strange. And uh, you're going to see a, a video clip that I think is the funniest video I've ever shot coming up in a, in a few uh, frames here. And you know how you, a cat goes crazy when it has catnip and does all sorts of strange things? I'm starting to think that this little blue got into somebody's stash because the behavior here is just a riot to watch. So I'll stop talking and just let you watch. All I'll say is I think that bird's high on something. <laughs> Finally starts to calm down. Tries to get something to eat.
Just chill, my friend. Time to chill. And then elsewhere on the pond side, green herons, gators, great egret. I like this one. I kind of framed it shooting through some brush. And then here's a gator that had caught something, but I says, well, I'll film and see if he shows me what he has, but Maybe it's like a giant gummy bear, I don't know. He was just he was just chewing underwater. Usually when you just see this kind of behavior and the mouth doesn't really open very far, it's just gonna be a small fish. There were actually, um, my friend saw a gator get a very, very small flounder, and which was good because we thought all the flounder had been killed off from last year, so apparently there are some small ones. So he finally swallows whatever he had and he starts drifting along the edge of the, of the bank here where I got a lot of foliage in the way. But I kept filming, I thought it was pretty neat that, you know, here you go, you know, the autofocus is still staying focused on that gator, even though I have all that foliage uh, between the lens and the gator. And I thought that was, I was surprised that it didn't jump around. It was very good. And the little blue taken off. We did see a, t a turn uh, today, which was nice like the wind wing pattern there. And I look for, you know, all sorts of different insects, you know, when things get a little slow, so. Yellow legs. Kill deer. You gotta pose from each side, cause you know, just like a person, a bird might have one good side. <laughs> Now this looks like it's slow motion, but it's not, so it's going to be slightly jumpy, but this, lar this is like one of the larger gators here, and this is way on the opposite side of the pond. I mean, I'm probably using the DX crop mode with the 800 millimeter handheld here, and, you know, I think doing a reasonably good, good job hand holding it, but I wasn't sure what he was doing, you know, he was like going around the uh, edges of the reeds here and I thought maybe he was looking for some flounder because they like to like tuck themselves in between or very close to the reeds to uh, try to protect themselves. But he just, you know, kind of eventually meandered his way around a gap in the reeds like he went around the corner and then he just disappeared. And for the record, like within five minutes of this, you could hear him bellowing and making noises. And I think there might have been a nest in there with a female waiting for him. A couple more bird and flight shots. Now this was interesting, the gator, you know, just drifted by where the anhinga was uh, drying off. And now we're in a different part of the park. We're over near the um, nature building and along where you have that damaged walkway that you've seen many pictures of. And here's damage here with some spoonies hanging out as usual. And now for a change, there were some ibis here as well. And ibis uh, have not, you know, have just recently showed up. Kind of late. Little blue watching everything going on. 
tricolor at the bottom. Spoonie seem to like. The thing is, like in that cord grass, you know, they, one they like to play with the grass. And here's one doing an exercise uh, routine. And I, I think there were a group behind them that you can't see in the picture. And this was the uh, leg stretching exercise program for the spoonbills. It's like, okay, keep, keep lifting out that leg, keep stretching out that leg. And then, ah, yeah, really, really give a good kick here. And uh, so that was kind of funny. And now we move to another area of the park. We are on what we call the straight road, which is a different, a freshwater pond. And um, here you have the black crown night heron. And you're going to see a, a little video clip here. as this uh, bird crawls up the stick, uh, the branch, kind of looks at me and then eventually says, well, I think I'm going to get out of here. So it was kind of neat getting it in flight because I've never gotten one of these in flight before because they really just stay in the trees or in the reeds in this one section of the park and you don't really get them flying too often. Then you have the Anhingas, of course, and, and they just always try to find a spot where they could spread their wings and dry off. These were two young black crowned night herons. And we have a snowy egret here. And a green heron scratching an itch on this piece of uh, branch. And giving me a nice pose. Now here are the young ones again, a pair of them, you're going to see a video clip in a little bit. But they like to play with each other, you know, and they, they get pretty close to each other with their beaks. This clip's a little jumpy because I basically want you to be able to hear uh, the sound of these birds so um, I didn't slow this down so it has the audio of the birds making a racket just wanted you to be able to hear what they sound like so here we're gonna have some more still images for you to look at See how they like to play, almost like joust each other with their bills. And here they're like touching, top and bottoms touching. I love that one. And here one grabs the lower portion of the other bird's bill. And they go back and forth and they just keep doing this. Now here, there's a, here's another video, and you can see the young one here is very animated and, and like trying to poke at something. And what it is is now it, not sure whether it's a a different adult or if it is one of the parents, and it thinks it's getting food, and it's not happy that it's not getting food. Um, but anyway. Um, that's what seems to be what's going on, and that's that's what kind of got them stirred up to begin with. Knowing that there is an adult down there. You definitely like, you know, looking and waiting and looking down. And in between, they squawk at each other. Actually, the first time I've seen uh, juvenile black crowned night herons. And Chuck, not to pick on you, the one on the right kind of has your haircut, you know? It's like nice and even. <laughs> if you're watching. We miss you. Hope you get back soon.
Well, yeah, these, these two are having uh, quite the time. I think they've been hanging out up here on this branch for literally uh, several hours at least, if not longer. Well, it's cool. Like I said, I've, ne I've never seen the juvenile ones before. I've seen juvenile yellow crown night herons, but not black crown night herons. So we're going to have some still images here of them. And while wow, look at that mouth. I'm telling you, amazing. The tongue hanging out. It kept opening up its mouth wider and wider. I'm like, man, don't, don't break your, don't snap your head off. <laughs> it's crazy. And then we're going to finish up uh, this uh, presentation with a visit to Brook, uh, Brook Green Gardens, which is a botanical garden and sculpture center. And the purpose of the visit was to try to capture some hummingbirds. Unfortunately, the hummingbirds did not cooperate. So I took a few shots of, of flowers and they do have gators there so there's a uh, there was a small gator in a pond and a short video here of it just kind of like laying in the water as the water uh, shimmers around the alligator and uh, even the small ones you know the small ones are still pretty long you know small gators are, are long they grow about one foot a year um, it's when they start getting wide. Now this this shot was weird. It almost looks like an X-ray version of an alligator. Then they have a platform on the pond where a couple of them decide to lay on it. Here's another picture from the platform, or or shooting at the platform again. And you know, like I said, I took plants and flowers. This one I like. I like following the edge of that leaf in the front. And, um, you know, it's fun to go there. I enjoy it. In the heat, not so much, because you can't get there till 9.30 in the morning. And by 9.30 in the morning, it's pretty toasty. And these, this is the last shot coming up, uh, zoomed in here on the water, on the petals of this flower. And Jeff and Leslie can help me out with what kind that is. So I hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe uh, send me a comment uh, please uh, keep our friend Chuck from AP Studios in your prayers and uh, hopefully we will have him back soon uh, so he can be doing his live streams again in the meantime I'll attempt to do my best to fill in on Saturday nights I hope you join me then keep the community going and that's it. And as I say, enjoy life. Capture some of it. Some of it. Get out there and get some great images for yourself. No matter what kind of gear you use, it doesn't matter as long as you enjoy it. Take care. God bless. Have a good day.